Okay then, let's see if we can get over here now. We should be able to drive over. Where's the Tom Barry? Trying to find it. No Tom Barry inside. Except for that fish in the sand. Nope. Get he away from him. probably got a horde of Tonberries at his command, which means we'll be outnumbered. Unless... What if we cloned a bunch of berries? They blast those baddies into oblivion! That's an idea. Catch us in the crossfire. Oh. Uh, okay, what about Tifa? Uh. <laughs> Taking naughty thoughts? Oh, shut up. <laughs> I thought ninjas were supposed to be silent. Oh, forgive me for interrupting your fantasies. I'll let you get back to being perfect. Oh my! Although you feel that tells more about you than actually about Cloud, but that was super hilarious. And the way Cloud was just like... He was stunned that she actually said that. But you know, Cloud being the way he is, I do not think he would think like that towards Tifa. Sure, even if he would be attracted to someone, just imagine he's very innocent, this guy. Like, he does not know anything about relationships. Not anything. He's absolutely clueless. And did Tifa hear that? That makes me feel kind of bad, though, because um, I've read the, the book Traces of Two Past. Um, I haven't read the Aerith one yet, only the Tifa one. So maybe I should actually get into it now that we got Tifa name dropped. Uh, and a little bit why I feel kind of like sad. A, a part of me is a, is a little bit sad because Tifa's entire life has always been about her appearance. So now when Yuffie brought it up, like, uh, I'm like, Yuffie, not you too! <laughs> I know she did not mean it that way. I mean, she's also so young. Like, she's just a kid, a ninja kid. Who absolutely knows how to take care of herself. Um, anyhow, uh, just the traces of Tifa. Oh, right, if you're... If you do want to read this, uh, maybe you should stop watching the video. I don't know how much of it I'm gonna talk about, but there is so much to talk about. Like, she has had it rough, alright. Very rough. Yeah, so it all starts in Nibelheim. She is, in, in the book, she's telling Aerith She's walking beside, it sounds like she's walking beside Aerith, Barret, and Red. And Cloud is a little bit upfront, but in the text, she does say that he probably heard her talk about the past. Because what she's saying is that there were four friends, and Cloud was one of them. Although, Cloud wasn't really a friend, he tried to, they tried to invite him all the time, but he would just like, <laughs> yeah, he, he would not acknowledge them, he would ignore them, yeah, he, he did not want a part of their friendship. Probably, this is what Tifa said, that might have something to do with the accident at Mount Nebel. But when she said this to, to Aerith and the gang, she did mention that, oh, Cloud probably heard her talk about her past with Emilio, Lester and Tyler, and about what a close bunch they were. And those guys and Tifa were the only ones close to her age as well. So that's also why they become such good friends. Yeah. 
and the guys just thought of Cloud as this weirdo. And th that was so sad, like, ugh. when when Tifa said that, and just the thought of Cloud possibly hearing all of this, but he, like, didn't comment on it. I don't know, it, it, it stung. But in the book, it is from Tifa's POV. At least the first part. The second part is uh, Aris, but I haven't read that one yet. But it is so very interesting to know about the character. Especially since we barely know anything about Tifa. He's not just this childhood friend, y'all. <laughs> And her mother died when she was eight years old. So the village women were the ones who raised her with her dad as well. And the village women were like, okay, we need to teach her cooking skills, sewing skills, you know, the, the domestic skills. Because in Nibelheim, it was very traditional in that sense. Oh, a chocobo. That the, the woman's future depended on the husband. And seeing Tifa now becoming this strong woman, oh my god, she has had a long, long, long road. Let me tell you. I will continue talking about the book because it is so absolutely interesting. I had to talk with my friend about about Tifa's backstory because she was like, what? Tifa is just like a pretty face with a hot body and this shy girl. No, there's so much more to her. So much more. She's not where she is today because of not working hard. Uh, about when she grew up with uh, with her uh, friends. Huh. Why can't we go in here? We probably need to do something. Okay, okay. Uh, there was a part when they were closing in on be becoming teenagers, and then she said something about she could she could she could sense that Emilio, Tyler, and Lester were becoming more fl flirtatious with her because they were growing up and they realized that whoa she is a girl like we can get together but she was also very careful when they asked her to meet up like alone or when they were very bluntly flirting with her because she didn't want to like lead them on or something if that's not a tower i don't know what is He's a tower, all right. <laughs> but she also didn't want to outrightly just be like, nope, I don't want to, because she doesn't want to hurt their feelings. It's also what she said in the book. Let's be smart. And she's like that now too. She doesn't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but at what cost? It's not always good to consider other other people's feelings. You also need to consider your own feelings. And then there was a part where the guys were talking about leaving, leaving for Midgar, joining Shinra, and possibly like striking it rich. And here she explained that she felt it was like when when reading this, she felt kinda left out. Deal with that. Like they would leave her for Midgar. And that was her exact feeling. She did say that it was like her versus versus Midgar. The dream they had. But also one of the guys 
I don't remember who it was, but one of the guys was like, hey, but not all of us can just leave. One of us have to come back for Tifa. So she doesn't be lonely. And, and she, oh my god. She's such a sweetheart. But she was she was like telling that them that oh well don't don't care about me. That sounds so exciting. Don't don't care about me. <laughs> It was just oh. because then she said that her feeling after she said that was like she was asking for attention. That's exactly what she said from her own perspective. That because they changed the subject to cheer her up because they they realized that the feeling which she was saying this was not very cheerful. Cloud, I've detected proto relic signals emanating from a nearby modular reactor. I'm sending you its location. I would like you to investigate. Uh oh, Sandstorm must have kicked up or something. Transmission go through? Yeah. This must be the Sandstorm. Say what? Where the sandstorm? Sweltering sands! What is this thing? No way. What misfortune for you to venture so far for treasure already claimed? You would do well to leave, that I may collect what is by rights mine! You think the proto relic is yours? Proto what now? Relic, you say? A ridiculous name, unworthy of my treasure! What you names covet is none other than a prize in my resplendent arsenal! We gonna fight? Uh oh. Oh. Let's form! I can hold on! Is this the swordsman? <laughs> oh. Yeah, he seems goofy. Hold oh, on, down I go! <laughs> So what was that? Someone Cloud knows. <laughs> oh, thank goodness I finally got through. Are you all right? I'm fine. But what the hell was that just now? I'm investigating the matter as we speak. In my initial analysis of the sand entity, I detected a proto-relic-like signal. I'm unsure how they're connected, but I fear we might be after the same thing. Of course we are. There's no telling where it might appear next. Please, be careful. Okay, thanks for caring. So, that sand giant was probably the eccentric swordman? Ooh, what was I even talking about before? Yeah, let, let's just get into the buggy and continue. There was also a part where Fluffy was lost. Fluffy is Tifa's cat that she got from Xander, I think it was. The village leader. The signal is growing stronger. Perhaps there is a proto relic in the nearby reactor. Uh, you mean that thing? It's been altered. Though it doesn't appear these modifications were made by Shinra, whoever's responsible may be waiting within. Proceed with caution. Hmm. Okie dokie. Let's go in. So when Fluffy was lost, it was actually Cloud who found Fluffy. Because the cat she got got lost. And 
then they try to find it, but okay, it's blocked. It's some sort of monster's den, a fortress, if you will. Whatever it is, I don't think we can get inside. <sighs> Whoa. Commencing scan. I believe I have a match. The symbols resemble those found in the Book of Kings, an ancient tome. Allow me to translate. Hmm. Interesting. Well then, in order to unlock this door, you'll need to locate a cactuar rock hidden somewhere in the desert. What kind of rock? A mineral deposit named for its distinct cactuar shape. Now that Cloud has made contact with this door, the rock we seek should be marked by a green glow. By the way, do you happen to see a cactuar shaped statue anywhere nearby? I think I have seen one. Oh! Oh, I didn't That's think it. about that. That statue should guide you to the rock I spoke of, which in turn will serve as the key to the door. So we must prove ourselves worthy. I know you can do it. I think I did stumble across a rock that looked like a cactus or a stone or something. Okay, so we just raised the cactus or a stone to locate this rock. Okay, then we're gonna be searching because I don't remember where it was. Oh, well, okay. Uh, about the cat fluffy. Um. Uh, it was actually Cloud who found it, and when he found it, of course, he did not have the courage to give it to Tifa. Uh, but from her perspective, she was so surprised when Claudia came by and was like, here's Fluffy. Actually, Cloud was the one who found Fluffy, but... Um, well, you know, you know. He, he was nervous. She didn't say that, but Tifa was just like surprised that Cloud even knew she had a cat. So that's also something that indicates that they did not have any contact with each other. They were... They were like only playmates when they were like six and seven about there and then she explains that they just like grew distant out of nowhere so she didn't know either why why they grew apart and she also explains that she didn't really know cloud <clears throat> so that's also why why she doesn't know why she doesn't really understand that he was nervous and he had a crush on her. She had no clue whatsoever because that's how you act when you do have a crush when you are that small. You don't know you don't know how to handle it. And also like Tifa being the popular girl and surrounded by the other guys. I think that also intimidated Cloud a little bit because he did say that the other guys were just like stupid and he didn't want to hang hang out with them. <laughs> that he said in the OG. From Tifa's POV, she didn't really, she didn't really know. She just knew that they didn't really like each other that much. But she seemed very neutral. Like, she was the one with, and the other guys inviting Cloud, but he ignored us. Gotcha. But also at the part where the guys were talking about leaving Nibelheim, and she and um, Tifa feeling lonely, like she would have no friends there. All done. I just like the fact that the guys, being just kids, knew that something was off with her. Like 
saying, oh, how exi exciting that you all are gonna go and just live life. And she did, she did after that, when she said that it felt like it was her against Midgar. She did want to, uh, to gain attention from them, so she began like, just baking these cakes for their for their um, tea parties she called them instead of picnics she called them tea parties and uh, yeah and she also said like this is exactly what she said in the book she'd be working this hard she never knew she'd be working this hard for a couple of the attention of a couple of boys But you know, she was a people pleaser after all, so... Although it's... I'm not saying she's a people pleaser like in a negative way. Because this is how she described herself. She thought very much of what others were thinking. And that is totally normal. Especially for a girl living in a very like traditional kind of village. Nice. With me. And it's usually like that, like the female has to be the more considerate. Society. No when it should be both. Take it from here. And it doesn't have anything to do with like masculine or feminine traits. It's just decent human beings. You're up. Pass me to the uh, what more was there? Yeah, and then there was oh, maybe I should talk about when they would meet at the water tower. Yeah. So uh, when Tifa was uh, heading over to Emilio's place, the general store, store uh, she could feel Cloud or someone staring at her. So she turned around and saw that it was Cloud. Oh, we found it. Okay, I co I'll continue after. Oh. What do you with that? Hey, no Also, another thing about when Tifa felt like she it was her for Midgar, uh, she also began to to buy like clothing that um, she saved up money to buy clothing that the city girls would be wearing like just to, to impress the guys Time to burn. just like a kid does but anyhow it was cloud who was staring at her and then he like just bolted straight towards her and <laughs> told her that she should meet him at the water tower. He didn't even say a, like a specific time. He just said, did he say at night or something like that? So not even a specific time. But anyway, like she could just look out of her window and see. <laughs> that easy. You're just a fortune teller. Here goes. <coughs> oh, shit. <laughs> no way. <laughs> um, what are you doing? I'm not doing anything. Him. Oh man! 
That was hilarious. How is no one else laughing? Do you think there are any more of these amazing rocks out there? Our pliability is most impressive. Whatever. <laughs> Let's go. No, that is so funny. I hope we have more of these rocks. We need to find them all. I wonder if there's gonna be someone else doing the cactar pose, or if it's only gonna be Cloud. <laughs> Either way, it's gonna be super fun. <laughs> also, there was a moment when uh, when Tifa's mother was still alive and they were at the dinner table. It was the time where she was six or seven. Uh, the time where Cloud and Tifa actually hung out. And uh, Tifa's mom said that Cloud had a face of... Did, did she say that he had like a face of... Like a beautiful face of an angel? Some, something something like that and I remember that Tifa like became happy at just that comment coming from her mom she, she just became like happy and the dad I, I don't think the dad was very impressed by Cloud because he had a sour mood after that and Tifa didn't know why either, so we don't really get to know why or anything. It's just he he was in a sour mood the entire evening. That's what it said. Now what is this? Is this like some kind of cactus or heaven? Certainly looks like it. Yeah, we don't have any MP. And we're probably gonna fight them all. Oh, they're adorable! But what are they saying? You know? To them, the proto-relic is the treasure of the sands, it seems. Which they have kept safe for generations. Moreover, they are duty-bound to ensure its safety until its rightful owner comes to claim it. Wonder who that is. Hmm. For all we know, it could simply be a myth. You're saying these guys have their own fairy tales? Sounds pretty silly to me. Hang on a sec. Who are you calling a fairy? A goblin? Whoa! No need for all that. Or a gremlin. Name's G. Kid G. Descended from a long line of goblins. I look after these cactuars. I it's remember a duty this guy. down to me from my forebears. Wait. You can talk? <sighs> Speech ain't that hard, lady. Where there's a will, there's a way. Given your present company, I'm shocked you haven't shaken that preconception. <laughs> he does have a point. Quoth Cactuar Scripture, the Book of Kings. Unto those who seek the treasure of these sands, a trial shall be given. <laughs> if you think you've got what it takes to be the treasure's rightful owner, you're gonna have to prove it first. <laughs> Prove myself. Where'd they all come from? <laughs> and now your trial. Take down the cactuars within the time allotted. If you can. Oh, I can, oh, alright. It looks like we have ourselves a volunteer. You be me? Perfect. Oh my gosh, test your might against an army of spiny speedsters in this race against clock. Ooh. Some come in all shapes and sizes and point values with some even boasting special properties. For example, gladiators are more susceptible to standard physical attacks, while magitars are vulnerable to magic attacks, like Yuffie's ninjutsu. Oh, I need to keep this in mind? Well, I have some more talking about Tifa to do, so I will try to remember that while I'm talking about Tifa's past. Oh my god, I feel like this is gonna be an episode just talking about Tifa. But you know what? If it is, then it is. I hope y'all love her because I do. 
<laughs> oh my god. Yuffie's gonna do great. Anyway, she went to the water tower and she dressed up in her pale green dress. Yes, it said pale green dress. I was like, I don't know, but in my mind, it was a light blue. Anyhow, it said that the reason why she wore it was because she got a compliment from Emilio once saying that she really looked good in, in this pale green dress. So she wore that one to uh, to meet up with Cloud. And she didn't really know what Cloud wanted, like like she said. He just like grew apart from her. He just kept away. And it wasn't after the Mount Nebo accident, it was even before that. So it didn't have to do with just that part. I think he didn't like the fact, I think, that he didn't like the fact that she made other friends than him. That, that's the feeling that I get. Because he had difficulty making friends, so he probably felt left out, like his special friend had other friends. You know, like that. Kids. So she didn't know if this was like, it was this gonna be like a confession? A confession of what? And how would she respond to it? She didn't know that either. Like, did she... She even questioned herself, like, did she like him? Did she like him just like as a friend or did she like like him? But she did explain while she was like going there she, from her POV she was like no this like that she had and this is what it said the like that she had when going to the water tower wasn't the like where you want to spend the rest of your life with this special stuff on. So she didn't have those feelings for him. Uh, and then the thing that her mom said triggered her somehow. Uh, the one where she said, like, Cloud, the little striped boy, is has a face of an angel. Uh, like, <laughs> like that. So it, it triggered her. And and her and she felt like her heart rise just like hearing that so there was definitely something even though she didn't like have those feelings the fact that her mom said something very positive about cloud i think that kind of made her be like, oh, but my mom liked him. So, there is a reason why I should like him too. That's probably why, why she felt this physical, uh, like her, her heart rate went up a bit. And she could also... She, she also fumbled and got nervous. So she then realized that this is also what she said that it was probably most probably because she looked up to him like he was this kind of beautiful untouchable purse presence to her and i was waiting for like something else than than that she felt like he was this untouchable presence like she was really putting him on a pedestal Probably because he was mysterious. <laughs> Gotta say, I'm impressed. You gonna hand over the photo relic then? Mm -hmm. Never heard anyone call it that before. But I'm a goblin of my word. Then what do so you yeah. call it? Was it that easy? And so, as promised, your piece of the prize. Piece? You want the whole thing, Shrimp! Hey! And you're gonna need to go around and gather up the other bits. Put it together yourself. Alright. 
So what you're saying is... That more trials await. And that yours truly will be your guide. See you next time. What an unexpected and exhilarating turn of events. An ancient treasure guarded by an army of cactuars and a goblin. Not to mention the mysterious giant of the sands and the Book of Kings. Huh. Increase in body temperature detected. I believe I'm rather excited. <laughs> I've already picked up another signal from the Proto Relic. He's or rather, excited. the treasure of the sands. Head for Modular Reactor 2. Say, how many of these mini reactors are there anyway? Several. These modular Mako reactors were erected throughout the desert as a means of generating and supplying power to the Gold Saucer. To avoid accelerating the desertification of the region, the reactors are periodically cycled between active and dormant states. Who would have thought all that glitz and glamour came at such a high cost? In any case, the reactors have been ingeniously repurposed by the Cactuars, and within these fortresses, they may secure their treasure. I honestly doubt Shimmer could produce anything half as resilient as this combination of sand and cactuar nectar. Hmm. Does it want to talk with us? Okay, going there. Oh, we can continue. I think I'm good. We're all good. <laughs> They're so adorable. And Yuffie did so well. I had to go back here. Just in case. Just to check on Dine. But also, I wanted to sit down. But also to check on Dine, like, what, what, what happened? Is his body still here? Like, can we do something about it? Hey! Oh! Barrett did do something about it. Oh my god, I love this detail. Barrett is the only one who came over here. He's looking at the grave. That is such a nice detail. And he's the only one who didn't really move when I moved. And he... And he goes back. That is such a nice detail. I love that. Love that. Okay. Let's keep going. Barrett, are you are you ready? <laughs> we need to go to the other place. Uh, yeah, where was I? I was talking about the water, water tower when Tifa was there and what she was feeling. And then she said, this was also in the book, that she just impulsively after... Oh, wait, I didn't mention that. Uh, Cloud was actually talking about his life. Uh, in um, his like future and uh, he wanted to become a soldier uh, and uh, so he had this grand future planned and he was really like showing off we know this later on that he was definitely showing off and he wanted to be like the best of the best and then impulsively Tifa said to him that if I'm ever in trouble, here is where the promise comes in. Uh, she tells him that, promise me when we're older, that if I'm ever in trouble, you'll come. And she con continues like, promise me, promise me. Uh, and the next day, he, he had already like left. The, the other boys had left as well. And Tifa was able to, like, say goodbye to them and such. But with Cloud, 
he, he had just like left without and this is what she says as well that he left without saying goodbye to her right. without really <laughs> promising promising that or even leaving a hug like nothing <laughs> No. So she began to feel very lonely since Take the lead. all of the boys had just gone up to Midgar. So from always having someone to talk with, someone to play with, to being utterly alone because there were no other kids their age, it was them. So she, she began to only like interact with Fluffy and, and her dad. Oh, also, after she said that promise, uh, it also said that her feelings changed. So during the time where they were in the water tower, she came there feeling like, no, the light she had was not something special not like the special kind where you want to live your live spend the rest of your life with the person it was just a different one that he was unattainable unreachable uh, but after she blurted out that promise thing she like she felt that he was just a normal boy when he was speaking about his future just like Lester Emilio and Tyler had been talking about she realized that he's just a normal boy so I can like him so that's when she understood that he's not untouchable like she can really like him and that's when it said that it was the special like that she was feeling that's why she was nervous fumbled around him Let's do this. <sighs> even though it might have not been like that before like it was just you know do it he was a little bit mysterious just that's it she was interested, she didn't know why he acted differently like the others. It's very, very, very relatable. But also when when she when she knew that he had left without saying bye to her or anything, uh, she was left pretty sad. But then when she had that thought, she lost and was thinking, oh, why is she thinking like that? Because she didn't know Cloud. And then... Because she realized how little he knew him. She knew him. And then when she had her 13th birthday, she didn't get a single card from any of the boys that went to Midgar. Not a single congratulation card. So she was, she was kind of furious at that. <laughs> and also at this part, she had already, already met Zangan, Zangan, her martial art teacher. That was also a pretty funny story, though, because. When they met, she thought that he was stuck, and he was like impressed by her arms and calls. So he was like squeezing her arms and legs, and she was so so creeped out by him. So she thought he was a trafficker. And the next day, he had like this exercise exercise thingy in the village and she she was so freaking good at it and he knew that he saw something in her um, yeah anyway on her 13th birthday um, she got no she got no cards and she actually even though she she did get a little bit upset why did I say furious? She, she did get upset and uh, 
She just thought for herself, like, oh, maybe, maybe they're just right. busy. Maybe that's why they haven't thought about sending her a card. <laughs> so Tifa's life now, without the boys, consisted of just, like, reading, Shit. cooking, no doing all back. these domestic things. <laughs> so that's probably also where she learned the piano. Okay. And the only ones she interacted with then was... The father, the cat Fluffy, and then there was something that she said in the book that just made me realize ah, uh, they did not knew, know each other at all, Cloud and Tifa, because from Tifa's perspective this was how Cloud was, but from Cloud's perspective probably very, very different. Hmm. Oh, wait. Now I. Wait, I just need to do this. And... My focus just went from being focused on telling you about the story into like, oh, what am I gonna switch to? Uh, what do I want? Yeah, so she was alone, but she realized that she liked the alone time, and it felt so peaceful. So she enjoyed it a lot. And she began to have these feelings like, wow, she felt like so presumptuous that uh, Cloud was this lonely child, and he actually didn't, wasn't really lonely, he just felt like... He just felt like... Um, he he wanted peace of mind that's what it was from tifa's pov so she felt like oh so he actually this was his choice to be alone to not play with the other kids that's why he ignored them and didn't want to go with them on adventures and such so she felt like like that was his choice although um, Nah, nah. As we know, it wasn't like that, but she was a kid, like... She wouldn't have known, and they, like like I said, they they weren't really friends. He was, he was interested in Tifa. She... She, I felt like she got interested in her, in him. Not at first, but she got interested in him. And kids don't usually, like, think about others' perspectives that much. But Tifa did actually do that. Although, even if she was wrong, probably, very, very probably true, that Cloud was not alone by choice. I don't think any child is alone by choice. Everyone wants friends. Especially being kids. And and she was also, while she was thinking about Cloud and uh, being alone, how it felt so peaceful. Uh, she was also thinking about, wow, it must feel so great being like Cloud, not thinking about what others thought. But that also, I, I don't for a second believe that Cloud did not care about what others thought. Not for a second. And I don't think so now, either. He might appear cold, but... Nah, he he for sure knows. Oh, okay, let's see who's gonna turn. Wait, wait, we don't have it. <gasps> now, okay, right, 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 right. We need to find the house first with the Cactor Stone. See, I'm just talking so much, and then I'm like... Uh, okay, what was I doing? <laughs> 
I was talking about something. <laughs> oh well. Uh, so that was it. Guys, it is such an interesting book. I thought it was just the cover was made with AI or something. Like it was fan made, I felt. I didn't actually think that it was. Uh, that it was a book <coughs> from the developers. I had no clue. I had seen the cover and was like, oh, this is a nice uh, image, but I didn't think it was an actual book. <coughs> well spent money, totally. And then thinking about that part where uh, she she really valued other thoughts, others' thoughts about her, is also when Fluffy disappeared and her dad was like, oh, Fluffy disappeared again, Tifa, aren't you gonna go look for, for Fluffy? Dangerous territory, yeah, we are, Kate, but we're gonna make it. Rare Spearhawk variant, I recognize it. And uh, she, she just like shrugged it off. She was like, oh, well, Fluffy, Fluffy will make uh, her way back home, it's okay. Like, not, not a big issue, that's how she felt. But then, because of how her father looked at her, he had this thought that this is what the other residents must be feeling as well. Like, oh, this is the lazy Lockhart girl who can't even bother looking for, for, for her cat. But she knew that Fluffy would always make her way home. Was Fluffy a girl or a boy? I don't remember now. Darn. Was it a boy maybe? Oh, anyway. So she she felt so guilty, not for how others were thinking, but more like she felt guilty like what if this time Fluffy would come back? So it made her go out and look. It is so interesting because how uh, how she talks about herself in the beginning, like when she was younger, like she was lazier. From that to become the hard worker that she became, oh my god, it is insane what this girl has been through. And I'm I'm not even I'm not even through to that. So uh, anyway, when she met Zanga, and that's. That's when when she really became strong. Like that was that was her her. What? I want to do this. Wait, do I have to be on the Moogle? Maybe I do have to be on the Moogle. Yeah. Now let's try it. Amazing! We've accrued a lot of great data, thanks to you! <laughs> that was very impressive work, Cloud. Using the data from your battles, I've devised a new trial for the simulator. Which I supervised. I think you'll find it to be a most fascinating scenario. So please do give it a try. Oh my god, I love their little beefs they have. <laughs> he's probably like, he's next at her. Like, nope, now it's my turn. Next. <laughs> yeah, also when uh, when Zangang beca began teaching Tifa his martial arts she he was she was given these books by zangan and those were secret books uh, so then she opened up a calisthenics club i think that's what it's called Ka calisthenics i don't remember but it was more mostly like older residents of nibelheim that came there and got like yeah exercises from tifa i think she got like two gil an hour or something something like that but being that young as tifa was and she had her own like exercise club that is definitely starting somewhere and it feels like this is actually when it starts to be about tifa and not the boys i love that for her
Because this is when she truly, truly grows. When she doesn't... She, she doesn't really have to consider everyone else's feeling. Even though it is difficult for her to stop. You should never stop considering others' feelings, but you need to consider yours as well. Uh, so anyway, when she was in this calisthenics club, uh, they were mostly older people and they liked to gossip, she said. And uh, then there was one Monami, I think, Monami, that was talking about Claudia. Get ready. Wait. <laughs> So she said like it was she was such a fresh breath of air that came into Nibelheim because she had such big dreams for herself. And that made Monami look up to uh, Claudia because she was thinking like wow, here comes this absolute kick-ass independent woman into this very traditional town with all these big dreams <laughs> and just has these other ideas of how how you can live your life. So she was looking up to her. Uh, but then, like the village people, weren't very nice to her because of her her different views, her her different want in life. Uh, so the villagers thought that she was looking down on them. Which she was not. Uh, that tells me that they were probably very jealous of Claudia for having that kind of like independent freedom thing. And it sounds more like they were stuck in their ways, but they wanted to do something else. Uh, anyway, Claudia fell in love with a man that is Cloud's father. We don't get to know like anything. Who he is. Uh, so she fell in love and and stayed in Nibelheim. And one day, when they they had uh, Cloud, and then one day he was gone. He just went for Mount Nibel one day, and that was it. They only found his like backpack. So is he dead? Did he get taken by the monsters? Thinking legendary. Did, was he taken by monsters? Did he like? just pain his own death like what happened we never know but she she stayed in Nibelheim and then the when and well other other uh, women of the village that went to this club were also speculating about who Tifa would end up with and I think that kind of stressed her out a little bit. Like, they only thought of her like this trophy. And it was said before that the guys thought of her like a trophy. Like, the one who would get Tifa would have showed the others that, oh, I was the one who was successful in getting Tifa. Do not like that. And she felt it too. She definitely did. And these uh, these village women also were talking about... If it wasn't that, they were talking about the past of her mother or her father. Like, oh, they, they had such a love life. They were, like, very popular with the men and the ladies and... So they like dated her around and then settled down. And she didn't like to hear that. And like who? Why talk about such things with a kid? Like she doesn't want to know that her mom dated like 10 others before her dad. Like it doesn't make sense. Why? <laughs> Just leave the kid alone, okay? And Tifa actually received a letter from Emilio. And the letter from Emilio was like, oh, he was telling about telling her about the life in Midgar, about uh, the class differences, 
the, the rich and the poor, like all the, the bad things and the good things. So he explained that, well, he wrote this in the letter that the, why he was telling her all about this stuff was to prepare her for when she came to Midgar to be with him. And she was fuming when she read that. Because she felt like, oh, he wants he wants to rule over me. Like, I I'm not an independent person. So we see Tifa as this very, like, sweet right, person. Then. Let's start looking for those craggy cactuars. Oh, we know one. We know where one is. And, um... What, where was I? Where was I? I think it was somewhere there. Yeah. Uh, where was I? Yeah, so she felt she felt angry about how Emilio saw her like this fragile girl. Like she couldn't take care of herself and just being pushed around and being decided what what to do for her. Uh, but it's very interesting since we see her as this very sweet person, but in her POV, you can actually see when she is angry. She does have uh, not anger issues, that is not the word I'm searching for, but you know, she, she does have those kind of feelings as well, but don't show them because it's not socially acceptable. <coughs> Especially not for a girl from a very traditional village. So Tifa decided to become uh, the disciple of Zangan. Is that how you say it? Zangan's disciple, yeah. So she asked him and he was like, of course. And, and then Zanga was like, why are you irritated, Tifa? And she was like, no, I'm not irritated. And he could sense her irritation. And this was after she had read the letter from Emilio, because she wasn't, she wasn't doing well with the exercising. So he was like, no, I know there's something. And it was the letter that had like clouded her mind. And the feeling she did say like she did tell Zangan about the letter. What are oh you wait, waiting I need for? to watch this. Go on, touch it. Ladies first. Oh no. You're way better at the whole putting yourself in harm's way thing. Fine. <laughs> Word of because advice. you love. <laughs> Don't fight it. Yes, <laughs> heed the voice of experience. <sighs> what did I do to deserve this? You love the cloud. <laughs> Let's head back to the reactor. Oh my god, they're having so much fun. They have so much sibling energy. Yuffie and Cloud. It's so incredibly fun. Uh, anyhow, when uh, Tifa explained that, well, she got this letter and she wants to prove uh, prove Emilio wrong, that she can take care of herself and such, and so Zangan told her that that is not the mindset she should have. Revenge should not be a mindset to have. So he told her, like, your mind cannot be clouded with anger. So she has she has to learn that. And that is why she forgot the things she had already learned from Zangan when they were exercising. And then when it came to hearing about the soldiers, 
coming to to Nibelheim, he was of course thinking like, oh, who would come? Could it be like, could could Cloud be there? But then again, she asked, she asked Claudia, like, how do you not know if Cloud became a soldier or not? And she and Claudia was like, what? She was surprised. She was like, where did you get that from? Who who told you that Cloud wants to be a soldier? So let's do it. That is also something that that explains to us that he was just trying to impress Tifa with becoming the best of the best because Tifa said to Claudia that he wanted to become the best of the best. So soldier. So Claudia was like, oh goodness, goodness. Hmm. It's like she knew no! that that wasn't really what he, he wanted to become, but his dreams were affected by Tifa. Deal with that. I'm your one stop so right the now. mother probably knew that. Oh, wait, he actually had a crush on her. Here I go. Ready? On it. Shall we? Come on. Ready. And sometimes I think about All done. the relationship Tifa had with Cloud, like a little bit of like limerence. Mm. How do how do I explain it? It often involves idealizing the person, which it felt like she was doing a little bit. Since she didn't know him, then it becomes idealizing what a person is like. And when they do stuff as well, you're like idealizing that, oh, they did it for this reason, like you kind of know the person. And you kind of want to so put enough. good things. What do you say? Want to jump right into your second trial? Yes, let's go. Hm. You've begun to blow this one up. You know how this ends. <laughs> or is it Cloud this time? Do I ever. But to you? Holy Whoa. crap! Ready! Let's see. Who looks fit to fight? Oh, me! Can I give it a go? Harry? <laughs> Fine by me. If the little lady wants to show off, I say let her. Oh my god. I feel like this is gonna be a little bit difficult. Oh, we're gonna get hit a lot, aren't we? Yeah, I'm just gonna jump into it. Note that characters of other affinities may appear going forward, so keep your mental wits about you as you fight. Oh, anti lightshore Luminous Ward and press R2 to summon an anti-Dark Chuar Shadow Ward. <gasps> I still have a lot to talk about. Like, uh. <laughs> Yeah, let's try to keep this in mind. Uh. Oh, item master. Let's go, let's go. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to the third rank, but... Uh. Okay! <laughs> also, there was a part where she was uh, searching, I think it was after, knowing that soldiers were gonna come there. So, there was a part where she went looking for Fluffy again <laughs> and uh, I were you. Fluffy <laughs> she found you Fluffy but also a turf a woman that was a turf but it said we didn't get to know a name we didn't get to know how this person looked Maybe this just that it was a woman in uh, a black suit so a turf and uh, she actually I think she actually saved Tifa you asked for it. from a monster. That's it. I think it was. One more shot. Or more like, oh, do you know the roads here? Could you guide me? 
Maybe, maybe it was that. Yeah, and anyhow. So, who could that have been? I don't think it's someone we've seen. But very interesting. And it was after that that Xander was like, Oh, the Tifa, you've already guided a little bit help. to one person and it went really well. We we got to know this from this person, so couldn't you be the guide for the soldiers as well? So if she didn't if she didn't show this terror what that she was a good guide, she wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to meet the soldiers. Which we know were Sephiroth, Zack, Cloud in a Helmet, and another unknown one. Yet, it's, this did not go well, you guys. I don't know if it is run parking or probably everything. I probably need, like, to shuffle my equipment, like, have the speed demon on me, and, and something that brings up my ATB. Yeah, definitely. Need to charge the A to B very fast. <laughs> You're always welcome to try again, you know. Hmm. So we're gonna do this. Um, anyway, after the whole incident, you know which incident I'm talking about. Uh, the one where Tifa gets sliced by Sephiroth. Uh, she wakes up, or she has this... She wakes up in uh, a clinic. Dr. Aranye, I think it was. No, so not Dr. Sheeran. Dr. Sheeran actually helped with the... I think it was like... What is it called? I don't remember what it was called. Something... The lungs? Something? I don't remember. But it was more of like a bone structure surgery. And then there was... Then she was at the clinic where they did the skin grafting. So... While she was there, she was asked, like, do you remember anything? And Tifa was like, no. I don't remember anything. Like, it's all blank. And the only thing she could... Remember, of course, Sephiroth, but she wasn't gonna say anything about that, because she could... He's a dangerous person, okay. I mean... Now show me what you got! You don't know what could happen if she told anyone that... She, what happened. Uh, and that he was... Um... Oh no! Be no, they said that he was killed. That he, that he died. But you know, that was... Not true. I keep my distance if I uh, Anyway, at this clinic, uh, she told she told them that she only, she could only hear like Zangan telling her like hold on Tifa, to not lose her, and then she could see some nurses. So she had she had glimpses, but, she, but other than Maybe that, she like knew on. nothing. Didn't recall any memory. From that, from that point, and, backing off a bit. Go and on. that's also where she gained this huge ass death that she was putting. Because this clinic, you know, uh, they said that, well, just so you know, this is gonna be very, very expensive for you. And I think it was like, what was it? 160,000 gil? Like, that is a lot. Oh my god, we're getting thrown the frick around. So, of course, she was very, very anxious about how she would gain all of this money. And then she said like, oh well, her son can, can help her. So, this son was Rakesh. You will know about him. I don't know if I'm Get ready. if I have the time to continue talking too much because it's probably been an hour soon. Anyway. Hey, you asked for it. Let's just try to focus on this. So Rakesh showed her to Midgar. So she was gonna work under a guy named Manson. One more shot! So not under Don Carneo. So she was at 
um, Sector 8 at a place called Container Row? Or was it that Sector 8? Well, it was Container Row where she was living. And there was a Watchman there. And then there was... Um, inside that there was a water tank lady. And the water tank lady was uh, like the Watchman but for the showers. <laughs> So they had like three showers without curtains and you could like, it was for men and women, so her being like so young, of course she was really put off by it. And, uh, but the water tank lady, she was, she was a little bit rude at first. Yeah, but she really did warm up to Tifa. You could you could definitely see that afterwards. And I mean, even even like as an adult, I don't want to shower with freaking men. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> wow, you sure showed me. And I still thought you might be no better than a bunch of bumbling bandits. Well, we did. Ta -da. Ta -da. Let me guess. That's just a small part of it. We done now? <laughs> Not even close. You've still got two more pieces to collect, and they won't come easy. Ah, but I could use a bit of time to shore up the next trial, seeing as you kind of breeze through the first two. How's about we put things on pause? Here, uh -huh. give me your contact info. That way, I can hit you up when the trial's good and ready. What? We can't continue? Cloud, I think it would be wise to oblige his request. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Perfect. You'll be hearing from me soon. Peace. <laughs> the goblin is, is kind of cute though. <laughs> hunt is on hiatus. For the yeah. time being, I'm afraid our only viable course of action is to await further instructions. Okie dokie. Alrighty then. Should I try once more? Nah. I don't think so. Yeah, you. I I'm gonna try once more. Uh, this really became an episode purely about Tifa. <laughs> but wow, she's such an interesting character and I love her. I've always loved her. So for me, I get really excited speaking about characters, backstories that I'm really bonding with. And I feel like everyone should know about Tifa's backstory. Uh, so I probably will continue talking about what happened afterward because she is so hardworking. She deserves the absolute best. Uh, because all of that she's been through when she went to Midgar like, she went through a lot in Nibelheim, but Midgar, that's another step as well. And now that she's also in debt, yeah, I'm gonna be talking about this, that as well. So, if you don't want to hear about it, uh, maybe you'll have to skip the next part as well. I'm sorry. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching and bye-bye.